Well, that's good. All right, so today, we've, so we've got two bits left, so 12 C is broken into four parts. We did two parts of it on Friday and uh, another one today. Okay, so when's the test? Sixth and seventh. Two weeks today. Oh, that's ages. Yes. So, what this is called is the title is this use of recursion to generate state matrices. So state matrices is just uh, uh, what it means is there's something occurring and uh, using matrices to find out what's occurring and then over time what's going to happen. So we um, have a matrix, so some definitions to start. We would say some definitions. So first of all, the initial state. Would be a matrix is S0. So that's the, the matrix. Yes, zero. So that's what we start with. Then what we have is our transition matrix. And so our transition matrix, T, and what does our transition matrix do? It tells us um, how the, uh, so how the, the change happens. So then what we can have is then we can have the changes occurring. So the, the change represented by T occurs on a regular basis. Example could be weekly, monthly, etc. And each time the, ch the change occurs, um, it's called a stage. So if this is what we start with and we have a transition and let's say for example it's monthly. So at the start of the month we start with this and over the month our transition indicates what the change to this is. And so after stage one or after the first month um, we would find out S1, so now, so if this is the initial state, the matrix showing us how many things we've got to begin with, then after the first stage or the first month, if it's monthly, um, we just simply multiply the transition matrix by our initial one. And then if we go another month or another stage, the second time, and then what we do is we multiply the transition matrix by not what there was initially, but what there was after that first month. Now, of course, what we had after the first month is related to what we had initially. So this here is the same as that. So we could write T times TS1 
times S1, and T times T is T squared. And so on. So we could do that for stage three, stage four, and so on. And then what we would notice is we would notice that there's then a pattern. Not S1, that should be S0, shouldn't it? My bad. There's a pattern involved that does relate to our initial conditions and the transition matrix and the number of times it's used. And if you have a look at the number on the stage and you have a look at the power on the transition matrix, you find that they're the same. So of course, T is just T to the power of one. So therefore, after in stages, In stages, what we have, the amount we have, is related to our transition matrix. So the power of n <coughs> times by the matrix we start with. And of course, this here, we'll get our calculator to do that. Um, so another definition, um, the sequence of states, uh, sequence, not sequence, is called a Markov trunk chain. Sequence of states is uh, S0, S1, S2, and so on, all the way up to whatever it is you're looking at. Alright, so let's have a look at an example. Alright, am I right to rub off the bottom bit? Yes, no. I'm saying no, we can cover it off. Alright, I'm going to paraphrase this example, it's quite wordy. So the first bit of information is that the survey shows that 75% of the time customers will continue to shop at store A, whatever store A is. Um, so what that then means is that the other 25% of the time they're going to change. change to store B. Alright. 
Um, it also shows that for store B customers, eighty percent will continue. Purchase from store B, and of course, then twenty per cent will change to store A. All right, so that's the information that we are. Two parts of the question. Part A says how many customers for each store after the first two months. Second one. There's a lot more words in the in the question than that. I just read the inter the first bit. <clears throat> so I'll give you a minute to get that written down, and then we'll get our matrices. turn this into a matrix so this is our transition this is what's changing all right so 75 percent of the time the customers will continue to shop at store eight so that's where we use those tables all right so this is the like the now and the future thing okay so store a store b 
door A, store B. And it says survey shows 75% of the time they'll continue. So if they start, now they're shopping at store A, then 75% of those people that are now shopping at store A will continue to shop at store A in the future. So 75% in here as a fraction, 0.75. So the other 25%, they can change to store B. Remember this from Friday? Yep. And then for the store B people, it says it shows for store B customers, 80% will continue. So all those customers, store B customers now, in the future, they're going to continue to purchase from store B. And the other 20% are going to charge. So that then becomes our matrix. Our matrix T, which is just those numbers. All right, so there's that. So that's all, all of these words here becomes that. That's our transition. So that's how the, the customers, the number of customers shopping at these two places is going to change over time. Next thing we need is our initial conditions and that's where this part A comes in. How many customers after the first two months if 300 customers started at each store. So that's our initial. And so S0, that's S0 is a column matrix, remember that, our initial stuff is a column matrix, we've got A and B, so we've got A and B, so in this case they're both 300, so there's our initial matrix. So. <clears throat> This off since we've now used all of that. So now we've got all the information we need to answer these two questions. So part A says how many customers after the first two months? So two months two months indicates two stages. N equals two. So we're after S2, and that would be T squared times S0. And so that is 0 0.75, 0 0.2, 0 0.25, 0 0.8, squared, and the squared we put the hat in the 2, times by that other matrix, and we get our calculator. To help us out. And when we get our calculator to help us out, one column. You're onto it, eh, Riley? Decimal, sorry, 
And the other one, what was the other one? Three. 323.25. All right. So now when we interpret that, first of all, these numbers got some decimal bits. Now in the question, what are we talking about? People. People. You can't have three quarters or a quarter of people. So we need to round it to the rear. So remember this is A and this is B. So after two months, store A has 277 customers and store B has 323 customers. So that's actual numbers. So we've got percentages we can do some similar things. All right, so in this next one, our transition matrix is still the same. This is still the same pattern of customers' movement. But this time, instead of talking about actual numbers of customers, we're talking about percentages. So we can, we need to change our initial matrix. So 50%, there's a couple of different ways you can do it, but the thing is we're using decimals here to represent percentages. I'll do the same here so we don't get confused. So 50% is 0 0.5 and 0 0.5. So B, some of this stuff changes. What changes? Well, in B it says after six months. So six months. What's in? Six. So S six, T to the six. Change that there for a six. Have that as 0.5 and that as 0.5. Five. So store A now has 45% of the customers and the other 55% would be in store B. Alright, any questions about any of that? Definition that we need to look at. Sometimes, like over here, we see that <clears throat> after six months, store A's got less customers than what they had, and store B's got more. So sometimes with things, time, over time, things will start to balance out so that you won't get any further change. And so it'll, it'll stay in this equilibrium, this balance, if you like. And that's what they refer to, <clears throat> excuse me, as a steady state. So, let's define what a steady state is. 
So steady state. Um, so a steady state is when a steady state is reached. Probably a bit better. When and when an equilibrium is reached. So IE, a balance. A balance where no further change occurs. All right. <clears throat> So the question is, how do we know if a steady state gets reached? And the way that we do that is we pick in a couple of numbers for n and we test them. Now we need to, because the steady take, state takes some time to get to, we need to choose the numbers that are, are big enough. And so to test for steady state, We can, first of all, calculate um, S50. All right, so that would be 50 stages. So if it's monthly, it's 50 months, so that's quite a lot. And then calculate. S51, that's the next month, and then what we need to do is compare. Now, if those two numbers are the same, S50 and S51, what do you think that that tells us? All right, no further changes occurring. So if no further changes occurring, we've got a balance. If a balance or an equilibrium is reached, we have a steady state. So, if there's no no difference, between S50 and S51, Sample on that. Show those two links here. There's a few words in this example, so again, I'll just paraphrase as much as I can. All right. So, just to paint the picture, the 
insurance company. needs to measure the risk. All right. So we've got the following information. So the information that we've got is that this particular place, 75% chance that if today is dry, oops, then tomorrow. percent chance if today is whoops that's shocking today is wet then tomorrow is wet in a table first up. So remember, it's always now and the future, so that's today and tomorrow. So two options, and the day and tomorrow, are dry and wet. Seventy-five percent chance. Today is dry. Tomorrow is dry. So here's today is dry. Tomorrow is dry. Seventy-five percent. So that remember the columns have got to add up to hundred. Yep. Or, or one. Yep. Hundred percent. Or one in decimal. Absolutely. And uh, the wet one. 72% chance of today is wet, tomorrow is wet. 0.72, again that's got to add up to 100%, uh, 28, 28. So there's our information. First part, part A. Now, what I should have put up here is that I didn't, I should put that into the matrix. So our transition matrix. So it's just the 0 0.75, 0 0.28, 0 0.25, and the 0.72. All right. So 
So part A says, what is the chance that it will rain in three days if today is dry? So we're going to somehow set up an initial matrix. So initial matrix, today is dry, not wet. So how are we going to show that in here? So the way we do that is we assign a number and we say, okay, so let one equal dry and zero equal wet. So again, if we're looking at our initial condition matrix, same order as we've got here, dry and wet. So what is it today? Is it dry or is it wet? Well, it says, well, it's content, we'll run in three days if today is dry. So today is dry, initially it's dry, not wet. Does that make sense? Yeah, I've assigned that. Yeah. And so we want to know what, whether it's going to rain in three days. So if it rains in three days, it's going to rain in three days, not if it rains in three days. What's that mean that N is? squeeze that down the bottom. So S3 is our transition matrix, which is that one over there, the 0 0.75, 0 0.28, 0 0.25, and the 0.72. And we're going to raise that to the power of 3. And then we're going to multiply it by that other one, which is 1 and 0. Here's the one I prepared earlier. All right, so the one I prepared earlier says that we've got 0.577 up there and 0.423 down there. So when we started, we said that one was dry and zero was wet. So we knew it was dry today and it was not wet. But now we've got some sort of decimal numbers. So if we're looking at the same, this is dry and wet, and we think now about this as being the probability or the percentage chance or whatever of being dry and wet. So 0 0.577 means that uh, what chance or what percentage chance of it being raining. So raining is wet. So that's this one, not the 0.577, the 0.423. Um, if we turn that into a percentage, that's 42% chance of rain. Alright, so up here if you like, it's 100% that it's dry, we know it's dry today, so it's 100% chance of that going to be dry because we know that. We know it's not wet, so 0% chance of that. But in three days time, because of our transition matrix, that changes and there's about a 42% chance that in three days time it's going to rain. Now, part B, I think, asks about steady stuff. Yeah. So the way the question is worded is this. The question says, 
find the long term probability. So find the long. So this is the last bit. Alright, so that's the first bit there, that's a key thing, long term. Alright, so long term, if you see the words long term, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> excuse me, if you see the words long term, that indicates to us steady state. So for steady state, we need to choose an, an end, so choose a large end. And, <coughs> excuse me, the suggestion I did earlier is that n equals 50 is big enough. has changed is our initial conditions. So for this particular one, initially, it says initially, the day is wet. So if we find the same thing, we've got dry and wet. So if initially the day is wet, So now then, we need to set it up, S50 equals that transition matrix, there it is, 0 0.75, 0 0.28, 0 0.25, 0 0.72, the power of 50, certainly you don't want to be doing that by hand, 0 and 1, and 1 I prepared earlier, So again, dry and wet. So if initially the day was wet, we're now down to 0.72, so 47% chance that it's going to be wet, and uh, 53 that it will be dry. All right, so. So you find the long term probability of rain if initially the day is wet. So the long term, we would say that 47% chance of rain. Is there any 
anything that anyone wants me to clarify before I move on? Or stop, I should say, rather than move on. No, nothing? All right, just think about something. You can. So that, this is uh, 12C Part 3. 